Welcome back in, everybody, to Birds 365, August 14th, moving right along in the offseason. Johnny Mack, let's get into our uh, what we've seen from camp, the the, um, the position battle. Now, I, I the- see now I'm hating on Jalen Hurts. Boy, did people listen? I, I, uh, I've said pretty consistently he's had a great really summer. That. There was yeah. none of that. That was hate, everybody. Well, I think people are, you know. One, you know, I saw one comment made the point. He's like, well, last year we're, you know, we can't win with the explosive play and it was an issue. Now they're taking underneath and it's an issue. There's always the issue. Well, no. I mean, look, it is a fine line. You have to walk. I, I don't, I don't think, um, yeah. I don't Which think I said a hundred times. Yeah. You want them to get better at what, you know, you want them to involve, uh, but you don't want to take away what makes them jail and hurts. And I, I've said pretty consistently, he's had a phenomenal summer. Um, and I hope it continues to uh, to evolve. I just got a little note, a little asterisk that the the shots down the field are are much more limited than they typically are. Maybe that changes once they get to the real games. But I'm not going to pretend and say, "Oh, it's going to change," um, because you have a new coaching staff and that coaching staff has emphasized historically about getting the football out of the quarterback's hands quickly, which um, for certain quarterbacks, that is a very good thing for this quarterback. I don't think it should be the hard and fast rule. If that's hating, I guess I'm a hater. Yep, let's move on, Johnny Mac. I want to get to that linebacker point. You tease it going into the break. You want to bring up a linebacker point that was kind of credited in the Eagles linebackers. Let's hear it, Johnny Mac. Where are well, you? Well, it's not credit, but I, I I think people are way, way off base when they talk about linebackers in coverage. Linebackers are not good in coverage in general. Um, that's why so many offenses design plays to get linebackers in space against playmakers because they can't cover them. Um, So I was looking up and I said to myself, and, you know, who are the good coverage linebackers in the NFL? Who are the good coverage linebackers in the NFL? By the way, ask any fan that question and watch them struggle to get names out. And, And generally, it's all veteran guys. I always tell my Jack Del Rio story. You know, so last year, so I looked, I was looking at PFF's coverage rankings for linebackers. CJ Mosley was number one. He's 32 years old. Great linebacker, has been a great linebacker because it's about feel, it's about intuition. Number two was Quincy Williams, also with the Jets. Um, and uh, these are the guys that play all the time. There's some uh, part-time players. Uh, Terrell Dodson's had a good year last year in, in Seattle, but he's a part-time player. Marquise Bell in Dallas, but he's a part-time player. Uh, Isaiah Simmons, very good athlete with the Giants, but he only played 300 snaps. So of the guys who played the three-down linebackers, C.J. Mosley's 32. Quincy Williams, good athlete. Demario Davis, as you know, one of my favorite players, 35. He was the fourth best coverage linebacker in football. Brad Warner, who's the best linebacker in football, next. Roquan Smith, Roquan Smith. Uh, Bobby O'Karakey with the Giants, very good. Drake Greenlaw, people know what happened in the Super Bowl. When he got hurt, you had to go to Warren Burks in the 49ers. Um, TJ Edwards, not the best athlete in the world, but damn smart. These are the best coverage linebackers in football. Those are the best coverage linebackers in football. So, you know, temper your expectations when it comes to linebackers and coverage. And that's why. You know, Nicobe should be out there. That that are are they going to get beat? Yes, of course they're going to get beat. But you know, if you want somebody to cover, then you got to play dime and put an extra defensive back out there. You know, 
what you're striving for is to get a TJ Edwards, a Demario Davis, a Fred Warner, a CJ Mosley, guys who are smart, high football IQ, understand where they need to be in zone coverage, make it difficult as difficult as possible for the corner, uh, for the quarterback with, with angles and delivering the football. You're not looking for guys that can run with Saquon Barkley or Kenny Gainwell down the field. That's not going to work out well. Yeah, because not there's basically none of them that can. Yeah. So anyway, that's my point. Well, you know, that makes me think, though, maybe that's that's a bigger case for you pointed out N'Kobe Dean. Well, I'll go further. I'll point out Jeremiah Trotter. Yeah, I'm well, I'm I'm that's my bold prediction. By week yeah, six, yeah. those are your starting linebackers. But and and that's the reason because those are your two most instinctive and in, instinctive linebackers. Um, and I get Trot's a rookie, but you know, one of the other guys last year is a guy, Ivan Pace, who was, you know, more of a part-time player, but he was top 20 in coverage as a rookie, and he was undrafted. He was a guy I I thought the Eagles, he was a great college player at Cincinnati, but he's undersized, really short, 5'10-ish, so he didn't get drafted. And I said, man, they should sign him as an undrafted kid because he can play, and he could play. Now, are there some limitations because of that size? Of course, but he was in the top 20 as a coverage linebacker already. Um, so why can't Trot do it? That's my assumption. He was undrafted. And but he's very instinctive, and so is Trotter. So I'm I'm very high on Jeremiah Trotter Jr. Now the one sort of pink in my thought process is um they're kind of redundant, they're kind of the same type of player, and maybe maybe Vic doesn't want that. Um, you know, they're both undersized, they're both not the most athletic guys in the world. Um, and he might want, you know, that Devin White presence from uh, just a physical standpoint on the field. But, you know, I think when he sees him making wrong decisions and, and blowing coverages and getting out of gaps, I think I think that that thought process will change. That's why I think um, eventually it's going to be Nicobe and Trotter on the field. But we'll see how it shakes out. Yeah, we'll definitely see how it shakes out. I want you to just clarify this for Prince. He says, TJ sucked at coverage with us. Did I miss something here? Can you clarify? <laughs> yes, it at the yes you did. You missed a lot because he doesn't suck at coverage. And again, there's 32 NFL teams. Watch the 31 others. If you think TJ Edwards sucked at coverage with the Philadelphia Eagles, you do not understand defensive football and what linebackers are designed to do. Again, give me a good coverage linebacker. And if you say Devin White because he's athletic, you have no idea what you're talking about. His coverage numbers in Tampa Bay were awful. Awful. Embarrassing. T.J. Edwards has been a top 20 coverage linebacker in the NFL for the last three years. Not, not one of those baseball relievers where he has one year he's up, one year he's down. For three consecutive years, he was in the top 20 as a coverage linebacker from PFF three consecutive years. I, 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 I don't get, I don't get it, Xander. I don't get it. Prince claps back says, I do. You clearly just watch PFF. He sucked. All right, Prince. Uh, I, listen, I, 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 that's the thing. And no, all, all these goop balls, Xander, when PFF tells them Lane Johnson's the greatest thing, they love it. They love it. Oh, oh, but then, but then when they when they don't like a player and they tell well that this guy's actually pretty good, then all of a sudden it's oh they suck. They don't know what they're doing. Pick you know, pick one, pick a lane. 
pick a lane. You're wrong about TJ Edwards. You've been wrong about TJ Edwards. Talk to people in Chicago. He was a freaking monster last season. He was their best defensive player. Oh, but but he was undrafted. He can't run. Give me the guy who can run and doesn't know where he's running. Good luck with that this year. Because I guarantee you one thing. I guarantee you TJ Edwards is going to play better football than Devin White. I guarantee I guarantee sticking to it because he's good. I hear you, Johnny Mac. Good stuff there. Let's move on. Move on. If you uh, if you enjoyed that, obviously, let's let's drop those stop it emojis, John. I added the stop it emoji for the well, signature. That, that is a big stop it. And that's oh, a stop God. it. That's a stop it, everybody. You got to hit me with the emojis in the chat. The stop it, J Mac emoji. So good stuff there, John. Let's move on uh, out of the linebacker. We have beat that to a pulp. Oh, never mind. Let me get to the super chat real quick. How did Mike uh, White make All Pro in 2020? Was he great? Well, that no, was he's never he's never been great. Um, unfortunately, you know, some of the people um, voting for All Pro shouldn't be voting for All Pro. I've had that discussion with with Rob Motti, and people get enamored. He had nine sacks. That's why he was an All Pro. He had nine sacks. To to answer your question. On why he was an all. Yeah, that was also four seasons ago. So you, you're not going to hang your hat on four seasons. You can't. Um, we can't hang our hats on four years ago. When when he his film was not good that year. Um, he's his film has never been good. I I give out the numbers all the time. Um, so that year he's graded the 62nd best linebacker in football. Um, of 83. Um, yeah, he had nine sacks is why he was named an all pro. And by the way, occasionally, if you let him go straight ahead, cause he's a phenomenal athlete, he's going to get a sack. And if, if people aren't paying the, the attention to, to the consistency from play to play, they're going to be enamored by that. But you're also going to have the missed gaps and the, the coverage blows, and you saw it early in Baltimore. Um, wrong gaps, wrong run fits. You know, but he might get a sack. Let's move on, Johnny Mac. Let's get to that right guard position. One of the bigger, one of the bigger camp battles as we got into training camp. You think Mackay Becton's is is in a position now to run away with that job? Yeah. Well, I don't know, run away, but. I, I think it's his to lose at this point. Um, I think that's pretty clear. Um, and, and you know, I, I think the Eagles are going to be fine because the other four, I think they'd be fine with Tyler Steen. I think they'd be fine with Mekhi Becton. I think they'd be fine if they're forced to play somebody like, you know, Max Sharping or even Nick Gates or even, you know, Matt Hennessy. Um because the other four are so good, but, you know, I do think they are enamored with the possibility of having another great offensive lineman. If everything clicks with Mackay Becton and Jeff Stoutland, boy, but six, eight, he's six, eight, not quite. He's six, seven and, and three eights, but he's almost six, eight. And that is really big for a guard, really big. So I, I think, you have to see how he handles it against some of the better defensive tackles because it's much more of a leverage game. It's much more of low low pads win inside than outside um, where you're on an island. So I'm not sure how it's going to work out, but I, it does seem that Jeff Stoutland is enamored by it, and that's the way the Eagles are, are going to go. Yeah, they're going to follow his lead, no doubt about it. But, John, one guy I'll, th I'll point out, and Daz brought him up in the chat, and he was a guy I was very high on coming out of coming out of college. He was a fifth-rounder, I think, or a fifth or a sixth-rounder. I think it was a fifth-rounder. You know, does he have a chance at this on this team? Maybe not this year, but, you know, just, just looking ahead, it's like where do they go? Like, he's not going to take Landon Dickerson's spot, but he's he showed that he can be a good guard in the league, or at least he, he had a good first preseason game. I guess he hasn't shown much yet. But if he's a guy that excels or they believe can have a role in the team, 
What does that look like both this year and, and in the future? Is he somebody that can move to that right side, right side and Becton gets a big contract somewhere else next year and then you, you slot Keegan in? Is that realistic? Yeah, I could I could see him being involved next year. Um, I I think a lot, you know, depends on, you know, I think the Eagles' hope is to keep Mackay Becton long term. I think their hope is, you know, he plays very well and he like he already likes it here. He already wanted be in, he wanted to be involved with Jeff Stoutland. Um, and if he starts having some success, then they're probably going to try to extend him. Um, but yeah, but you know, wouldn't that Keegan, mean he's going to take a massive pay cut and basically be waiting for Lane Johnson to hang him up? Yeah, yes and no. I mean, not massive. I mean, the Eagles are will be willing to pay. And they typically are if he succeeds. Um, and it's not that he remember he's had a, a pretty bad situation in the past. So he's very tuned into good situation versus bad situation. Now, ultimately, you know, I don't know Makai that well personally. I've talked to him like three times. I mean, most players default to who's going to give them the most money, but not all. Um and if he plays well and somebody's willing to turn him into a left tackle again and pay him over $10 million, yeah, he's probably going to leave. Um, but you never say never if he starts having success and, and things like that. But long term, yeah, I, I think Keegan has shown enough to where you say, and it's not to me, the left right thing is not a big, big deal. He he played um, um, extensively at Michigan at one position, but he, he you know he he can play any of the interior positions, even center. Um, so I'm not worried about move from right to left. And obviously, to be a starter, he's going to have to move to to right guard with Landon Dickerson here. But he can do that. That's that's not a problem. And if he were the starter in 2025, it wouldn't. It wouldn't surprise surprise me at all, to be honest. Yeah, well, JM brings up the point I was thinking. That tackles get at least sixty percent more money than guard. That's the one thing I think. Where for Beckton's like, I'm a go- I'm a tackle, you know, and I'm playing guard, which is great, but I want that Lane Johnson spot, you know. And I don't well, think yeah, yeah, that's the, 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 remember the guard market exploded. Yeah, it, it, that's that's and, so and true. Twenty million. Season. Yeah. And Landon Dickerson's a big part of that explosion. So it's not as drastic as it once was. That's the conventional wisdom. I think and someone I who, who else just got the money, John at Oh, there's a bunch he, of there's a I don't bunch think he of guys. Landon though. I think he was like right behind Landon. I think I thought at least it was a guy recently, the last couple of weeks. There, there was a. I can look it up, but there's a bunch of guards that got paid, not just Landon. Um this off season, the, the guard market as a whole exploded. So you have, he's not even number one, Chris Lindstrom's number one, uh, Robert Hunt's number two, Landon's three, Joe Thune's four, Quentin Nelson. Uh, so, you know, guys are getting paid now at guard. They generally, they're willing to pay for guys on their second contract more than, you know, draft them in the first round. Um, but uh, yeah, a bunch of them, bunch of them are up there now. Yeah, good point. Definitely a big, uh, definitely a big jump for the guards. And Landon was a big part of that. So we'll see what ends up happening with those guys. I like Trevor Keegan, so we'll see uh, what he can be. But it does seem like uh, Becton, it's his job to lose at this point. What, what will that make Steen, John? Just a swing tackle, a backup guard? What, what, do, you, what do you think? Steen yeah, I mean, I, 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 I've always said Tyler seemed more comfortable when he was a rookie. At, you know, he played tackle uh, exclusively in college, both at Vanderbilt and uh, Alabama. And he just seemed more comfortable there. But NFL teams, most NFL teams project him inside because he doesn't have the longest arms in the world. Uh, Typically, NFL tackles have longer arms um, to better handle uh, uh, some of the pass rushers and, and people projected him inside. But you know, Nick was asked about that yesterday, as a matter of fact, because if he's got to be a backup, yeah, he's going to start cross-training a tackle, and I think people will see, again, he's more comfortable there. So I think that's kind of an easy move for him, to be honest, uh, to be a swing tackle. 
John, let's move into wide receiver three, The uh, one of the other position battles. We've talked extensively on linebacker. We just hit right guard. Wide receiver three, John, are they going to go outside oh, outside the outside the locker room to fill that position, or is the committee approach something the Eagles will be good with? Well, I think they started bringing up the committee approach when they couldn't find a one. Um, so I think they prefer one. Yeah. Um, but if it comes down to it, it's not a, a large tackle position, obviously. Um, a large traffic position, excuse me, um, in this particular offense. So, you know, if you think about last year with Quez and Alameda and Julio Jones, um, as long as you make the plays when they come to you, I think you're fine. I think Britain can do that. I I think people are skipping steps with Johnny Wilson. Um, and I, but I, and I, John Ross hasn't, I saw some people say he kind of showed up a little bit yesterday, but again, I wasn't there. Um, I don't think he's, he's, you know, look at the Baltimore game. None of them other than Covey were impressive. Uh, Paris obviously is back in a limited fashion. He was hurt with a groin injury, Paris Campbell. So I think if there's one position they were most likely to go outside the organization to try and fix, it is wide receiver three. Not only because of it, it's more about finding a competent backup, honestly, for AJ and Devontae than it is for the actual production. At wide oh, receiver three. Um, and I think they will try to go outside the organization and try to find a better alternative. Is there anybody out there right now at that position? I think uh, who did I just saw that just got cut? Was it Juju Smith Schuster? Yeah, Juju. I, I I wouldn't go down that route, but I, I wouldn't either. I'm they, just saying who who is out there on the market right well, now. Well, there's a there's you know what colleges keep just churning out receivers. That's what I it mean, is, baby. College football is, is made. That's all college offense, football you know? is. I know, um, it really is. And there, there's going to be guys who cut um, younger receivers with more upside than what the Eagles have right now in the, in the backup. So it could just be as simple as a waiver wire pickup or how he might have liked somebody in the draft, you know, and all of a sudden they they're facing a numbers crunch and he might get that August trade. He's semi-famous for that. It's not going to be splashy. They're not going to, you know, they don't need a splashy numbers guy. They're looking for a better backup to AJ and Devante. Yeah. We'll see what they end up doing. I guess Johnny Wilson, he showed flashes, but they're not confident in him. You think to be that outside guy. Yeah. I, I, it's way I think people like I said I think people are skipping steps with Johnny Wilson yeah. um maybe me included <laughs> um it, I now if you're talking about the piecemeal approach he he might be able to help you in the red zone as just uh an occasional threat yeah he might be able to help defenses would have to cover but if he if he's got to play 70 snaps, you will rue that day. Um, and that's kind of what I'm getting at. Like, he can't play a lot at this stage. That doesn't mean he can't down the road. And that's why I think it's far more important. Like, I, I think people are way too focused on who's going to be the wide receiver three in this offense versus who's going to be the backup to AJ and Devontae if they sprain an ankle. And if they can't play, in week five, that that to me is the way bigger problem than the three catches that might be doled out in a good week to the third receiver. Yeah, so we'll see what <clears throat> we'll see what ends up happening there. Say quads brings up a good point. We are looking for someone that is better than a Quez Watkins. <laughs> I agree at the wide receiver. Three, and, and, that, doesn't, that doesn't check the box of the outside, which is what John's talking about. But uh, uh, speaking of the guys at the three, John, do they look better than Quez Watkins? Well, it depends. Uh, Quez was, you know, we talked about confidence. Quez was kind of shot last year uh, from a confidence standpoint. 
if you're saying 2021 Quez Watkins, no, not even close. Not even close to 2021 Quez Watkins. 2023? Uh, yeah, everybody's better. Um, Did you see his, uh, I'm not sure if you caught it, Quez Watkins' first punt return for the, for the Steelers. Did you ooh, catch that? I do not like. Quez Watkins as a pump returner. Yeah, that well, not well you're, you're correct to, to not like it. because That is not it, a it good go idea. Well for, it didn't go well for Quez, and he dropped the ball and turned, turned it over. That was a – they had their preseason game no. for the same night that we had ours. I guess it was, was it Friday, yeah, Friday, so it was last Friday night. And I was I was live on the show watching the game with, with some people in our watch party, and, and that popped up on the Twitter feed, and I'm like, oh. There, every God. once in a while there's – and I don't know who Pittsburgh's special teams coordinator is – uh, I'll look it up, but you know, here they tried to turn Quez into a kickoff returner at one point. If people remember that, and kickoffs weren't that important. Now they've changed the rule, they're going to be a little bit more important. But he was just bad at it, and they kept putting him back there. And I'm like, there's sometimes when mm -hmm. I, I'm like, I, I usually pay deference to coaches because I'm not, I don't have that. People think. People might think I have an ego, but I don't have that big of an ego to think I know more than the coaches. But there's sometimes they do stuff where I'm like, you got to be kidding me, dude. And then Quez on special teams is one of those instances. I'm like, what, what, what are you looking at that you think this is a good idea? And that's punt returner, kickoff return, and, and coverage. That it, For people who have been down to practice, they have these tackling drills occasionally with the, you know, the big circle pad and where you just run at it. I've never seen anybody. He treated it like it was a, a hurt locker. He treated it like it was going up to a bomb and you see, you know, defensive players um, just exploding and tackling the thing. And, you know, the Eagles are watching this and saying, this guy can be on kickoff coverage. I'm like, what are you what are you saying? Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. John, any other play, any other position battles right now in camp that are worth mentioning here in the last 10 minutes of the show? Wow, moved right along. 951, nine minutes left on the show. Great show today. Appreciate everybody being I'm here. I'm very man. interested. I brought it up with Martin at safety. Just, you know, now that Caden Stearns is and and they gotta say see if he's healthy and how he's gonna get back on the field. But it's clear that they brought him in um because Vic likes him. And how does that impact things? You know, Bradbury, Maddox, you know, CJ is going to be back. Um, so who are the backups? That that to me is the most interesting position right now on the team. Um, oh, we've talked a lot about linebacker, but linebacker is concrete. You know who's here. You just yeah. Well, you know, well, well, real quick, back to safety, John. Do you, I do you have any concern on Gardner Johnson right now? I know you said the injury is not bad and none of them do, but yeah. he said yeah. he missed a lot of games in the last two years, and now he's injured again, half a camp here. I don't know. I'm just starting to get a little nervous. This guy, well, I'm, I'm concerned over, Shea, you know, that's my fear with them. Yeah. I, well, I don't, I don't no. These guys, I, I was one of my people would say that about Abonte. Abonte is one of the toughest guys, and that's part of the problem why he gets hurt. Um, and again, undersized nickel corner run fits, sticks his nose in there. One of the toughest guys. So I can't stand what people who's made out of glass when these people would actually break if they did like one tenth of what Avante Maddox does on the field football field. So I don't like that. But in general, I am concerned about CJ's um injury history, but I'm not concerned about this injury. Um this this is he's a deference player. So, you know, if he's got a hangnail, they're going to they're going to keep him out as long as possible to try to make sure he's completely healthy for week 1. Mm -hmm. I was told day 1 when he banged up his shoulder. And by the way, the play he banged up his shoulder was a one-on-one -on -one with Dallas Goddard where he made a great play and after the play, he was celebrating and being CJ Gardner Johnson and screaming at the top of his lungs. He didn't even look hurt on the play. So ultimately, um, you know, it wasn't serious. I was told day one it wasn't serious. 
they're just being very, very cautious with him. And he's been out there every day, whether it's trash talking poor Anaya Smith, uh, bringing the same energy. He's not hurt long term. They're just being very, very cautious with him. Doesn't mean his injury history isn't his injury history. I'm just saying this injury is not a concern. If I'm if I'm a Nia Smith, John, you know what I'm saying back to Gardner Johnson. I might not be making any plays out here, but at least I'm out here. There you, know, you go. He's listen, probably thinking about that. You know, Anaya's probably Anaya, went, clap back at him. Well, Anaya's probably went back to his hotel room and said, "Damn, I should have said that." But you know, if you don't get, if it doesn't come to you in the moment, yeah. doesn't doesn't matter. He's think, lost uh, his people, confidence, Sander. The funny thing about that is that I don't say that as a shot at, at C.J. Gardner Johnson. People that chirp like Gardner Johnson does, and I know because because I grew up with with. Somebody in my household. Chirpers. That part, that's a chirper. <laughs> Many of my siblings are very much so chirpers. The way to get back at a chirper is to chirp, chirp them back. back. That's, you that's chirp how back. you get back at a chirper. So. You got to chirp back. You gotta hey, chirp Quinion, back. Quinion's the most understated guy in the world. Very, you know, polite, doesn't say much. And then all of a sudden, you know, he makes a play on, on AJ and says trash round. You got to chirp. You got to chirp back. I, I think you give Quinny on a couple years. He's going to be a big chirp. He's going to be chirping like crazy. I don't think he's ever going to be a big chirper, but he's going to be a stealth chirper. Um, a and, silent assassin in a way. Exactly. Just pull it out of nowhere, which a lot of times is more effective. Like <laughs> yeah. Brandon Graham never shuts up. He's, right. he's you know always coming. Yeah. Right. And everybody's ready for it. Um, CJ's like that as well. Uh, the stealth guys, like that, took AJ back, man. It was like a it, it, that's more effective. The stealth guys. John is Anai Smith going to get cut? Uh, right now, today, I would say yes. He's going to get waived with the hopes that uh, they can get him back on the practice squad um, and hope to rebuild him. Um. But yeah, right now, and they don't want to cut him. And I've said, but he'll play a lot in New England. He'll play a lot against Minnesota. And all it'll take is one play. All it'll take, similar to Eli Rex, I brought that up when he had the pick six in Baltimore last year. He had a bad camp, um, but the Eagles liked him, uh, made a play. It was on film for everybody else in the league to, to see. And they didn't want to lose him through waivers, so they kept him. Same thing will happen with Anaya Smith. If he's got a long touchdown pass, if he's got a kickoff return, punt return, one play, they'll keep him. But he's got to make a play. I mean, got to make a play. We'll see what he ends up doing there. Johnny Mac, I'm going to take one more commercial time. Actually, no, we have three minutes. I'm not going to take a commercial break. We got a little bit later in the show than I thought. I uh, appreciate everybody being here. A lot of good people in the chat, John. People going at you today, Johnny Mac. It was a, a heavyweight tussle in the ring today, Johnny Mac, going back and forth. With well, somebody. you know, people, uh, uh, you know, look, I, I say it all the time. I'm not here to validate your feelings. Uh, listen, I'm here. I, look, I'm here. I'm to, here to give everybody a voice, though, and that's what I appreciate is that they voice their opinion. You tell them why they're dumb or wrong, and, and we have a good show. I think that's part of it. I think that makes great. Well, content. And, and it's not about being dumb or wrong. Well, in the case of TJ, that was dumb. I'm sorry. I don't know who said that, but that's dumb. Um, but he he can't cover. I'm and and and, and imagine watching TJ Edwards and then watching. Nick Morrow and Devin White and Nicobe Dean and say, oh, TJ's the bad one in coverage. I mean, I don't know. Are you watching the games? I, I don't even know what to say to you at that point. That's dumb. With the Jalen stuff, I think people missed the context of what I was saying, and that's that it's a concern and hopefully that it's just about trying to evolve as a quarterback and getting better in practice. I'm the one who talks about context and practice all the time. If people listen, I think that's a lack of listening. Um, that's what practice is for. Like, I don't care that he's not throwing interceptions. 
AJ said it the other day. Who cares? You're trying if you throw an interception. You're 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 typically trying to make throws that you wouldn't make necessarily in in a in a game and trying to push things. Practice is practice. Those stats aren't important. No interceptions isn't important. I've said every day, you're on with me every day, Xander. Have I not said he's had a very good summer, very sharp? He's been yeah. he's been very good. Oh, you have, <clears throat> no doubt. I'm a little bit concerned, and it's got more to do with Kellen Moore than Jalen Hurts. I'm a little bit concerned because of what I saw with Kenny Pickett as well and Tanner McKee as well, that this is the default setting. That's all. I think that's a fair I – don't, I don't really see what – I think it's are. very fair. I think it's very fair, yeah. I mean, look, you don't want Jalen Hurts to be, you know, what's not – what away from what made him so great in his first couple of years in the league. So I, I agree with Johnny Mack for sure. Definitely something uh, to monitor. But, John, good show today, man. Uh, we have reached the end. Appreciate everybody in the chat. Prince hits you back with one more final jab, John. I don't know if we can allow this. Prince says, whatever you say, Mr. PF. <laughs> right, right. What, whatever. I mean, if you don't know football, I don't care. That's, that, that's up to you. If you what, what, I mean, what do I care? I mean, Devin White's film is Devin White's film. Nicobe Dean's film is Nicobe Dean's film. TJ Edwards' film is TJ Edwards' film. One's one of the best linebackers in football. And if you don't know which one it is, that's on you. I, I, it's not bothering me at all. Good stuff today, everybody. Appreciate everybody for clapping back at us in the chat. It always makes for good content. I appreciate uh, all of your opinions, even when we agree. Don't agree. That's not the point. Um, that's here to have good good football conversation. Uh, and we had no guest in hour number two. So you guys made it a lot better for us uh, today. So thanks for doing that. Appreciate all of you. Johnny Mack, appreciate you, brother. Great, uh, great show today. Great input. Uh, we're, real quick, on the way out the door, what's the next two days now look like for the Eagles? They have a walkthrough, imagine, today, and then tomorrow. Walkthrough today, and so tomorrow's the game. Then they'll be off uh, Friday, Players' Day off. Saturday, back at the Novacare Complex, uh, 10 a.m. practice. So Saturday and Sunday, right? They're on this this weekend, so... Uh, good stuff. So we'll we'll be following it all, all week. Looks like we'll have seven days of shows this week. We'll have a Saturday and Sunday, at least a short show on those two days, but with a recap of the practice. But appreciate everybody being here. Uh, stay tuned. National Football Show coming up at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, looking forward to hearing what Dan has to say uh, today. So see you guys all over there. Hit that like button on your way out. Johnny Mac, good show, man. We'll catch you tomorrow. All right, brother. All right. Thanks, Sander. Thanks, everybody. All right. See you, everybody.